since we've been dealing with acceleration quite a bit, um, it's important to point out that acceleration don't always have to speed you up, unlike what we normally use in our everyday language. There's there can be cases where the acceleration is in the opposite direction as your velocity, in which case we will decrease in our speed and slow down over time. So this is one such instances. The word here is decelerate. Sometimes we use it, but not necessarily. In physics, we call all kinds of change in velocity acceleration, regardless of whether it increases our speed or decreases our speed. So what do we have? We actually have this time a person running already initially it's important to note that it's not always the case that your v naught will be zero. So we'll call this time naught and just define time equals zero at this point. So we'll call this v zero. And there's a initial velocity going that direction of nine meters per second. A little later, which is at five second later, we want to know what is the final position and what is the final velocity, etc. and etc. And in between, we know that the acceleration is two meters per second square, but in the opposite direction because it's decelerating. And to express that as the opposite direction, we make sure it's a negative sign. Then all your answers is going to work out as you use the equations. Now the equations we're using, of course, is as long as we have constant acceleration, which we're again assuming that that's the case, we can use x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t square. We can use v f is equal to v naught plus a t. And we can put it together pretty quickly. So for part a, we're pretty much just using this first formula here. So x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t square. Since they haven't really given us a particular reference point for x naught, we can call x naught to be zero. Plus v naught is not zero anymore. It's ten. Sorry, it's nine meters per second. And then multiply by five seconds. I'm just going to drop the sig figs here. I know that there's three. The acceleration again, this negative sign is very critical or else you get the wrong number if you punch in the calculator. And again, five seconds all square. Now, before you go ahead and punch everything in your calculator, it's a good idea to double check that your units work out because it's a great way to check that you've put in the right number in the right spot. In the sense that because we have a position in the end, how far she travels, we expect meters to end up with. So let's see if we indeed get meters as we follow through the units. So meters per second times seconds, I get meters. In fact, I get 45 meters, which is great. And this here is meters per second square, but then I multiply by second all square. The square applies to both the five and the second. So there's that. Minus, so this is minus one times five square, 25 meters. And so you end up with 20 meters. And you know that the unit works out, which is assuring that at least you didn't get put in things in the wrong spot. Since this is a little lengthier, it's a good idea to answer the question fully in a separate sentence, just to show that you have found an answer, the exact answer they're asking for. So she travels 20 meters in the next 5.00 seconds. Cleaning all the stuff up. Start fresh, part B. This time they're asking for the final velocity. That's going to be using this formula. Again, the unit should work out. So we have 9.00 meters per second plus negative 2.00 meters per second square 
times 5 seconds, no square this time. So we just end up with meters per second as we expect. But as you find out from your calculator, this here is minus 10. So we're going to end up with minus 1 meters per second. Which is kind of odd because this is basically saying it's going backwards. Or at least opposite to the direction where she was initially running. Which is kind of odd. You don't expect a runner to slow down, stop, and start running the other way. And that's where part C comes in to evaluate the result and see if it makes sense. In that, you know, physiologically, physically, it's unlikely that someone can sustain the same acceleration or the same magnitude of acceleration as she is slowing down and also as she is speeding up the other way. So that's kind of odd. In any case, uh, we should still answer our part B. So her final velocity is one meter per second backwards from where she started. One thing to keep in mind is because we're talking about velocity, it's important to not just give the magnitude, but also the direction. So that's where I have to put down the backwards from where she started bit, being complete for velocity, both direction and magnitude.